Welcome to video number 17 in the Using iTrain tutorial series. My name is Bob. In the previous tutorial we went through the first four steps in preparing a locomotive for use in iTrain. In this tutorial we'll look at how to adjust the reaction delay. OK, so let's start by defining what reaction delay is. Put quite simply, reaction delay is an adjustment required for each locomotive that allows us to fine tune its stopping position in both the forwards and backwards directions. More precisely, it's a figure that compensates for the true physical mass and inertia of an individual loco and its motor, which would otherwise cause the train to overrun. Now that's a lot of words, so let's have a look at an illustration to see if we can demonstrate what it means. This is a diagram showing the desired stopping point for our loco, the target stop point. And along the bottom here is the reaction delay in milliseconds, just like we see in iTrain itself. Here we see that the reaction delay is at the default setting of 200 milliseconds and we have an adjustment for when the loco is traveling in the forward direction and an adjustment for when it's traveling in the backward direction. If everything goes well, the loco will arrive exactly at the stop point. And the purple line represents the braking distance. But we have seen that there are a lot of variables that can affect the braking distance. So one train may stop too late and go past the target. Or another train may stop too early and not reach the target. All of the trains had the same 200 millisecond reaction delay. So to bring the arrows in line with the target, we need to adjust the reaction delay. So the train that was late, we increase the reaction delay. So now it's nearly 250 milliseconds. And the train that was early, we decrease the reaction delay. So now we have a reaction delay of around 150 milliseconds. So if a train goes past the target, we increase the reaction delay. And if a train falls short of the target, we decrease the reaction delay. Now, this was all with CV4 at the value 0. A value of 0 means the decoder's inertia simulation for deceleration is effectively turned off. And we are just using iTrain's own inertia simulation to break the train. What would happen if we increased the value of CV4? The decoder would then start adding its own inertia simulation along with iTrain's own inertia simulation and the deceleration will take longer so the braking distance will increase like this. All of the braking distances are now longer and if we want to align the stopping point for the late train, 
the value of 250 when it was CV4 equals 0 now has to be 275 milliseconds. And for the train that stopped early, the value of 150 when it was CV4 equals 0 now has to be about 175 milliseconds for the reaction delay. And a similar thing would happen if we changed I-train's inertia simulation by increasing the step delay value. That would also increase the braking distance and we would need to compensate again by increasing the reaction delay. So we begin to see how all of these parameters are intertwined together. Okay, right, so now we can finally go on to Ian's video to show how to set up the reaction delay. And hopefully now things will start to fall in place as we watch the video. What we're now going to do is set the reaction delay for a loco, this loco here, to ensure that it stops accurately on a line defined here, which is the stopping position for this block, which you can see if you look at the properties of this block. We can see that in direction previous, the stopping position is actually minus 59 centimetres, which aligns with these marks here. We're going to use a little shuttle route going back and forwards between the two blocks. We'll show how to create it in a later video. In the loco properties, the reaction delay is set at 200 milliseconds by default. In the configuration tab, deceleration is set at zero and one for acceleration. Here comes the loco and it stops short of the mark. Back to the configuration file, CV6 is a CV that you will have to configure as per your decoder manufacturer's recommendations. Now that loco just stopped short of our stopping point, so we'll go back into the options tab and adjust the reaction delay to 150 milliseconds to see if that brings it closer to the correct stopping point. The shuttle route makes things easier because we don't have to start and stop things ourselves. We can let it just do its own thing. It's coming up to stop again. We are set at 150 milliseconds at the moment and it hasn't quite reached it. So let's take it down to 120 milliseconds and we apply that. When you choose your shuttle route, there needs to be enough room for it to accelerate to the maximum speed before it needs to start braking. This block here is about a metre and a half long and about 40 centimetres here and around a metre here which allows the loco to get up to full speed before it starts braking. So we're at 120 milliseconds with everything else set as before. The train's just coming in to stop again. Where will it stop this time? It's just arriving now. No, not quite at the right place. So let's take it down to 110 milliseconds and see what that does. That will hopefully be enough, but we will see. An accuracy of plus or minus five millimetres is generally enough for me because there's always some variation in the stopping position. 
let's jump forward a little bit to save some time and here's a reminder of the settings that we made and let's see where it stops this time okay it still stops short so let's take it down to a hundred milliseconds and let it run once more right back to our loco let's see where it stops this time well not perfect but we'll leave it at that for now so what we now need to do is to perform the same measurement but with the loco traveling in the other direction so we'll physically lift the loco off the track and turn it around and in iTrain we will flip the direction arrow orientation. Right, so we've turned the loco around and we can start the route again. In the locomotive tab here, you may have noticed that iTrain displays the speed steps for the loco. Whereas in the train tab, it shows the speed. Here's the train arriving and it is just short on a setting of 200 milliseconds. So we'll alter that and put in a value of 180 milliseconds. So let's jump forward again and see where it stops this time. Here we go, just coming up and it is still short so we'll take it down to 150 milliseconds we've jumped forward again the train is just coming up and where will we stop this time and spot on that's exactly what we want so that means we've got the loco properly profiled in both forwards and backward directions right so with a setting of 150 milliseconds in the backward direction we have seen that the loco stops exactly here what we'll now do is go in and change the value of CV4 We've opened the decoder programming window and we'll change it from 0 to 40. Then make sure it's selected and click right. And we'll click the apply button and see what impact that has. Let's see what impact that has on the stopping position and see how we can adapt things for high values of CV4 deceleration trains accelerating up the track so it'll soon be coming to a stop and where do you think it will stop with this high CV4 value and of course it's gone quite a bit past the mark so previously with CV4 at zero it was 150 milliseconds we now have a CV4 value of 20 so we will need a significant change in the reaction delay so let's try a value of 750 and see what that does if you find for example with a CV value of 0 that you're having to enter reaction delay values of close to 0 you can increase CV4's value and that will then give you more adjustment in the reaction delay setting which is a useful trick to use so here it comes again where will it stop and it's well short so we'll need to decrease the reaction delay and we'll try 500 we jump forward again and the trains just coming up and yes well that was a really good guess at 500 milliseconds so now we need to do the same again but with the train running in the other direction 
So we'll physically pick it up and turn it around and get set for that direction. OK, so we've turned the loco around physically and we can start it on its way again. And we will need to change this. So let's try 500 milliseconds in the forward direction. We'll jump forward again and let's see where it stops this time. And perfect. So 500 for this one too. So I hope that demonstrates how to set up the reaction delay and how all the various parameters react with each other. OK, I've briefly paused the video here just to make a point before we finish. You will have noticed during Ian's video that he was just using the one stopping point, which aligns with these markers here. Now, the reason he was doing that was because he only has one camera for filming the one location. So if you are using a shuttle train route, like the one Ian was using in his video, you can actually perform the measurements at both ends of the route. So when you're going in the forward direction, for example, you can perform the measurement when it stops here, as Ian has done in his video. And then when it's going in the backward direction, you can perform that measurement when it gets to the stopping point at the other end of the route. So in that way, there is no need to stop and physically pick up your loco and turn it around as Ian did in this video. You can do the measurement at both ends in both directions. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care.